For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is political analyst Professor Raymond Satna to discuss his column titled Crisis, Despair and Harnessing Hope, Part 1. So what is wrong with uh, every second analyst having a solution uh, to South Africa's problems? Well, you know, if they were real long-term solutions, they, that would be good. But people keep on toying around with the same figures, percentages that parties have, and potential coalition partners. And it doesn't seem that most of these solutions have taken us any further. The ones who have more depth have no organization. The ones who have organization don't seem to me to have depth. And what's happening now is there's uh, almost a mathematical game where you try and work out, you've got to have get 50. How best can you get 50? This one is acceptable. That one is unacceptable. But it seems that everyone is willing to do deals and in the final analysis with uh, a fairly uh, disreputable organization like the Patriotic Alliance. So I feel that these so-called solutions have not got a framework of politics, of policies that will get us out of the present crises in every aspect of our lives, healthcare, water, hunger, schooling, power, you know, you can name it. If you look around us, now 20 years ago, if we looked around us, we would not have been complaining about most of these things. Partly, and I think this is very important as the media to recognize that some of the most serious violations of people's rights to dignity happen out of sight of cameras in the deep rural areas or in informal housing where people are not really entitled to be living by law, but that's where they are starving or unemployed or needing health care, which they can't get because of various things. So, Professor, you say that there is no debate in South African politics, but how does that come about uh, that in years or decades there are debates and one day we wake up with no debate happening and it continues to this day? Yes, it's very interesting. In the um, 1980s and the ni early 1990s, you see young Africans with books under their arms or you'd see people sitting down arguing about texts and debating. And I was, wherever I was walking, someone would stop me and say, what about this? What about that? And people were um, very grabbed by ideas. Now, what's happened is those people, many of those people have become members of councils, members of provincial legislatures, got government jobs, etc., and they can see that there's a ladder that you can climb. And that ladder leads to, from poverty in many cases, sometimes from wealth, but it leads to economic security and sometimes wealth. It also leads to positions where you can decide on contracts. Who gets those contracts? People you're close to or Others are excluded. None of this has got anything to do with politics. It's got to do, in the first place, with the fact that many people came into the situation with economic insecurity, and their families often felt these people, they've come back from exile or they've been away doing this, that, and the other. Now is the time that they can do their jobs as sons or daughters and support us. So there was quite a lot of pressure on people. And obviously they did want to help their family, but sometimes when you're not able to help as much as you like, there's a temptation that is dangled in front of you and that temptation becomes corrupt. I'm not saying 
that the only reason for corruption is pressure from families, but the atmosphere created a desire for wealth. And the desire for wealth is not a, something that you debate when you're busy scavenging for that wealth yourself. And that, to me, uh, the politics has been displaced by enrichment. And lastly, why are you so cool uh, towards coalition government uh, when many people see coalitions as the future? Well, you know, there may be no option. It may be that no party will get a majority in the national government, but we've already seen in a lot of uh, local governments, metros particularly, but also other local government, that in very many cases there's no party with a majority. So they have to form some sort of coalition. But I would prefer it if there were an ideological basis for people coming together, a common vision for the future, or that people got a majority and uh, delivered on that majority. But now you have the worst of all worlds. You have um, parties with 30 or 40 percent um, agreeing with other parties with 18 percent. And they sometimes then put, as in Johannesburg and Ekuruleni, they can't agree that one or other of the stronger parties uh, becomes the mayor and they get someone who's got 5 percent of the vote. And when you see in uh, Johannesburg particularly, but also Kuruleni, that when there's a big crisis, as now there's been a there's massive water crisis in Johannesburg, and there's an electricity crisis, pipes are breaking every single day. And the mayor has no authority. He's just been put there as a compromise to avoid either the EFF or the ANC uh, getting out of it, although now there is talk that the ANC uh, may pull out of this coalition, just as they will pull out of uh, any coalition with the Patriotic Alliance over Israel. There's an inherent instability. So I don't have an alternative in the voting system, but it points to another reason why we have to look beyond elections to a solution of the problems. I'm not saying we don't vote or that we don't have elections, but clearly there's a paralysis that has grown in the current situation where very few parties command support. That's not to say that there are not some very good people in many of these parties, but in general, they don't command public uh, support or admiration. There was political analyst Professor Raymond Sadna in conversation with Polity discussing his column titled Crisis, Despair and Harnessing Hope, Part 1.